What's going on YouTube? Evan here with Cloud9 Aquariums. A bunch of you guys have been asking me how I clean my tanks. I did a video already about uh, doing water changes and stuff with Aquion, uh, the water changer, but I think today I'm actually going to show you how I clean my 40 long because it's time to do it. Haven't done it for a week and I know you guys have really kind of been interested in how I do it and not uproot my plants and blah blah blah. So here's kind of a build off of that how to do water changes and get a little bit more down and dirty and specific on getting the dirty out, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so as you can see I already got my hood open, I'm all set to go. Got my hand dandy water changer. Um, first thing I like to do when I'm getting ready to do a big water change, okay? First thing. I'm going to clean the glass, scrape some algae. So, just last, I love my little mag float right here. Um, I'll just go across it, you know, just clean it up. You know, some people like to go really slow because they're worried about their, you know, stressing their fish out or whatever. Dude, honestly, your fish know what's up. They know what you're doing. Um, they're kind of more interested in the freak out. And honestly, if you can just get it done quicker, then they'll be less stressed out than if you're sitting there for an hour trying to scrape algae off the glass, all right? So... I don't go too hardcore with it um, because I got a pleco in here and you know if I, if I miss anything he pretty much takes it off but after a week you know there's only so much he can do. So I only like to clean the front of this tank um, because I have a pleco and I know he likes to actually he really likes to uh, get on the walls and stuff so I like to leave a little bit for him. Every once in a while I'll clean the sides and the back but as long as it's not a nuisance and it's not ugly. Um, because I can barely see any algae on them anyways. I usually just leave that. You know, I'm only really doing this to keep an algae outbreak from occurring. And just so I can see my fish. You know, I don't want to be looking through a cloud of green just to see my fish. Alright, so the second thing I got to do. And the reason, I'm just going to give you a quick little heads up. The reason I'm doing all this before I do my water change. Because I'm just dirtying up my tank. Now why would you do this after you do your water change? There's no point because now you got dirty water, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quick do a quick... Uh, trim on my jungle valve. As you can see, I've done this. I did this last week, so it's not too bad, but some of these are getting kind of ridiculous. So what I do is I just grab the top of them, pull them out of the water, and I like to clip it back just to a certain height. You know, everybody has their own thing about how they like their tank to look. I like my jungle valve just to be uh, a couple inches taller than, uh, than the water, so it gets kind of that uh, bowed over effect. Hope you guys can hear me alright. I'm not really talking into the camera today. Be getting a uh, nice little view of my uh, back today. My face is pretty, but you're gonna have to deal with this one today. So uh, this is a little time consuming, but you gotta do it. So I want to make sure how I do this. It's pretty quick and simple. I mean, this stuff is ridiculous. I mean, look at this. That's all. That's still attached to plants back there. I trimmed this a week ago. Look at that. Are you kidding me? That's growing over a foot in a week. That's ridiculous. I haven't even been uh, putting that much Excel in this week. I've been kind of busy. I apologize. This is like my first first video this week. It's just been one of those weeks, you know. Everybody has them. I seem to have them a little more uh, often uh, recently. Uh, just kind of part of the job, you know. You do what you got to do. I try to take care of my YouTube people though, too, because you know what? I know you guys got questions, and so even if I don't get to it in a video. As always, leave me some comments, you know, send me some uh, messages and questions. You know, I always really do try to get back to you as soon as I can. Oh, I got a whole plan with that one. Anybody want a jungle bug? All right. Hang that there. I'll plant that, flip that downstairs. An old 90 gal. Okay, so that's what we got for that. One more. Boom. Done. See, it doesn't have to be ridiculous. I'm just going to dry my scissors off. Stainless steel, but I still like to keep them uh, nice and fresh. Alright, so I got everything scraped. I'm going to look at my plants, see if there's anything I need to take out. I've already kind of went through it a little bit before because I didn't want to make a 30,000 minute video today. And I know nobody wants to sit here and watch me talk for 50 minutes. So, I already did some pruning. I pulled out some dead plants that I had going on. <clears throat> um, so that's what I got to go. Now, time to do some water changing. Alright, so, I'm going to go turn my uh, Aquion on. For those of people who haven't watched my uh, water change video yet and don't know about this Aquion water changer, let me tell you, 25 bucks on Amazon, best thing you've ever done. No more buckets, people. No more buckets. That is of the past. 
got my kitty in here going crazy because every time I turn this stupid thing on, she freaking decides that she's got to chase all dirt up and down it, and it uh, just makes life even more interesting, all right? So, what I do, this is a gravel-only tank, so you'll see I'm going to get down and dirty in the gravel where there's no plants. You can see it's got a little bit of junk in it. Uh, the main thing is you want to at least stir up the top layer. You know, I don't need to get all the way down uh, because I do this regularly. I don't need to do a deep clean every single time. But I know where the big hot spots are where my fish decide they like to uh, either drop food or drop other presents, if you know what I mean. Um, so, and when I come into these little carpets right here, you can kind of see I have a, uh, actually I'm not sure if you can, can you see it better like that probably. I got a little carpet going on here with the baby tears. You know what I like to do with that? See how I just kind of, I only push it in a little bit. That's because if I get way too down and uh, uproot that gravel, all the baby tears is going to come with it too. And then so all that hard work that's been going on here with them, trying to root themselves and spread, is just going to be completely set back. So try to kind of go around the bigger plants. Um, some of them I can actually fit like right in the siphon like this one. So I'll just go right over it, siphon up the crap around it. Um, I don't worry about too much about around some big plants just because I like to leave a little bit there. Just because that decomp is pretty good for their, uh, just a little excess nutrients for them to use, you know. One less thing i got to fertilize. Now, I'm going through a jungle valve forest over here. It's bound to happen, you know. The problem is it's really hard when they're so close together. This is why I like to thin them out every once in a while because I can't even get in there sometimes. And the problem is when you do get in there, sometimes you crush over a plant and you don't know. And it kind of sucks because you'll see like a week later, that whole plant will turn red and just kind of die off. And it's because you pretty much just crushed all the stems. And, and it is what it is, you know. You can't do it all, but I'd rather have a clean tank and lose a couple plants if I have to. Just because jungle valve comes back so fast and it's impossible to go around it when it's that close, you know. Um, in fact, I've even been getting rid of some of the stuff on Craigslist lately just because I pruned out like, I don't know, 10 plants the other day. Just put them up and traded them for some stuff, so... You know, it's pretty, uh, it's fun. It's a fun hobby. All right, so you can see I'm going through here again um, because it's, these are really shallow root plants. I don't try to dig it up too much, you know. The jungle valley, I can get a little bit more, uh, I can get a little deeper into the gravel and stir it up a lot. But you'll see it's not, it doesn't really need to be that hard of a thing, you know. Just kind of go around your tank, clean it up. Now, I will say... I already had my filters and my heaters turned off, okay, before I started this. That's one thing I didn't point out. Make sure you do that. Obviously, because you're going to break your heater if you uh, pull out too much water and your filter's not going to, like, dry heating for half an hour, you know. Um, another thing, too, when you're in here, make sure you clean off your intake grate for your filter. Um, you can get some kind of just junk on it and it uh, kind of limits the suction power it has, so I like to kind of take that down. Now you can see I'm pulling out a lot of water. Most of you guys probably would have stopped by now and pussied out, but I'm still going to town because I like to do big water changes. I feel like big water changes are the answer. You're having problems in your tank. You can't get your balance right. You can't get this right. You can't do it. Big water changes. I'm telling you. That's what's up. All right, so we're almost there. Going over here. Got to get these angels out of the way. They're all tweaking out. And you can see I just like to stir up a little bit of the gravel. Doesn't need to be insane. You don't gotta go crazy. Again, I do this all the time, you know. This happens at least once a week. So if you're you know, if you're doing it regularly, you shouldn't have to spend two hours cleaning your tank out because it should be pretty clean. Now when you let it go for too long, you know, some people I've heard some people go a couple weeks, a month. Jeez, dude, of course it's gonna take you forever to clean it, and of course you're gonna have balance problems because you're just you're letting it go too far, you know, it's not yeah, you're trying to make it the most balanced ecosystem possible, but at the same time, the way you keep it balanced is you got to do water changes and stuff because it is a closed ecosystem. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on, uh, go on Google and figure it out. Closed ecosystem. That's what a fish tank is. It's not open. There's no water coming in and out. The water coming in and out is something i got to manually do, you know? All right, so got that. Boom. Done. Now, usually this would be the, huh? I got one of those guys too. Cool. I'll put that back. Alright. So, turn my water off. Actually, I'll see. Alright, so the next thing I usually do, 
I fill it up with water. Obviously, I'm not going to put you through the board. I'm filling up my tank. Um, I'm going to turn that water off so you can actually hear what's going on. All right, so usually I fill up my tank next. Then I wipe down the front, you know, make it look all nice and clean. I like to go in there. You can kind of see there's humps and stuff, what happens when you're doing your little gravel and whatnot. I like to smooth that out with my hand after. Do it after you put the water back in because obviously you're going to fly some stuff around. Um, now, if you're doing multiple tanks, this is a great time to address any algae problems. So what, you, what I usually do is I'll empty this tank, and then while this is sitting, I'll empty the next tank. And while I'm working on the next tank, cleaning that one out, I'll actually come in here with some, uh, some C-Chem Excel. And I'll do a little medicine dropper right now, because it's a 40 gallon tank and it's uh, I'm running it with like a dose a day pretty much, um, so I can put a full four caps in. Now what I'll do is I'll pour my, I'll put a little you know in this uh, dropper and I'll actually hit the spots like um, let's see I got a nubius over here, that kind of stuff really tends to because it's a slow growing plant, the algae really likes to build up on it. So what I like to do is I'll hit it with some Excel, and I like to do it when the water's low and there's no flow because what it does is. It will kill that algae because it's just going to sit around it. There's not nothing to flow, you know, only thing you got going on in terms of current wise is fish going by. So it's just going to kind of chill around that plant for the whatever 15 minutes I'm working on the next tank. And that's going to kill that algae and then when I fill it back up, I already got my, my Excel in. I don't got to worry about it. And then I also got to hit some stuff. You can do, you can do concentrated stuff when, you know, the tank's just running. But I see that it works so much better when you're doing it like this, when it's off. Um, obviously don't do it before you do a water change then you gotta put more in afterwards but I like to do it when the water is not flowing there's no filters on I get a lot better results alright um, I think that's about it you know I fill it up I put my uh, fertilizers in anything I like to use I pretty much just use Seachem uh, Excel nowadays um, sometimes I'll put some iron in or I'll put some uh, I think it's called the comp stuff it's just got a, a bunch of a uh, bunch of different kinds of uh, nutrients in it and then I uh, Obviously, I'll put some uh, dechlorinator in it and rock and roll, okay? So, that's what it is. That's what I like to do, obviously, you know, match your temperature with the water. This is all water change stuff. You guys should know this is my last video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come on now. Get your act together. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Obviously, I try to put out a lot of videos. This week hasn't been the uh, most productive week in terms of my YouTube channel. But, you know, we do what we got to do. Um, keep sending me ideas guys, I got a lot of good ideas. This one's actually going out to one of my guys who was asking me how I clean out this tank specifically. So check it out. Always leave comments. I get back to you as soon as possible. Leave messages, questions, concerns. You know, even if you have stuff to build off of what I have, go for it. You know, I'm not the guru. I don't know every imaginable thing on the face of the planet. Sometimes I miss stuff in my video and I'm not going to go back and make it. I'll put it in the comments or whatever, you know. So if anybody wants to add stuff, it's great. You know, they can have a little form underneath my videos. So check it out. Read the comments. Interact, people. This is a, this is an interacting type of hobby. So hope you guys are having a good week, and I'll see you guys soon, all right? Hope this video brought you and your fish tanks a little closer to Cloud 9.